Hi, it's Petra, the Beach Education Officer for the City of Chelster and Port Adelaide Enfield. I'm here today to chat to you about uh, the different types of equipment that we might use on our dogs. Um, so the very first thing that I wanted to say was it is by law a requirement that your dog is on a lead no greater than two metres long on any public footpath, um, on the on lead times in the foreshore and it is really important that you adhere to that two metre length. So that's the very first thing, make sure you've got a two metre lead. While we're on leads, I did want to mention the extender leads or the retractable leads. Um, it is, uh, while, while I totally appreciate uh, the value that they might have in an off-lead area um, to be able to give your dog that extra freedom without risk of losing them, uh, they actually do in, uh, work to potentially encourage pulling because your dog has to get used to having that pressure on the throat to get further away from you. So that's the, the one thing to consider, but the other thing is the health and safety associated with those retractable leads is that they can cause injury to fingers, they can trip people up that don't see them, they can break, especially if you've got a large breed dog. So um, we tend to not recommend retractable leads, but you can certainly get, if you want to give your dog that freedom, um, large, uh, uh, sturdy, long leads like a horse lung drain, for example. There's other things that you can buy in pet stores that can replace them quite nicely. I actually did my honours research on the equipment that we use on our dogs and I was really surprised to find that there's not much research out there, unfortunately. Um, what we do know is that excessive pulling in a collar in any type of, in any type of collar can uh, put a lot of pressure on their windpipe and potentially damage their windpipe. It can also increase the intraocular pressure in their eyes. So if those dogs with dome heads and, and large eyes like your pugs or your cavaliers, um, your boxers, it can it put their eyes under a lot of pressure, which is something that you definitely don't want. We also follow the guidelines and recommendations placed by the RSPCA. We don't recommend choke chains used on dogs. Uh, prong collars are actually illegal to import into Australia. They are a metal or plastic collar with spikes that dig into the dog's neck. And electric shock collars are illegal to uh, use in South Australia as well, just so you know. Um, we obviously all want to take our dogs out for a walk. Uh, so I really like harnesses because it gets that pressure off the throat. You can have a back attach harness or a front attach harness. So a back attach harness attaches the lead at the back there. Sometimes that you might feel that that helps dogs pull um, stronger because they can put all of their weight into that breastplate. If that's not a problem for you, it doesn't matter. Um, otherwise, a front attach harness, which is what De Gwen is demonstrating for us here, um, the, the lead clips on at the front and it can help uh, lessen, we think, the amount that a dog can pull. There's two different types of um, front attach harness. One is a Y shape, which we think might help with their range of movement, so their shoulder movement forward, and the other is a T shape, which is a strap that goes straight across their chest. But there's not much research out there to say whether um, one or other is, is better or worse for a dog. But the, Anecdotally, they certainly do um, seem to help with dogs that pull a lot. So Gwen is 52 kilos and we walk her off her in a front attach harness. There's only uh, a few harnesses out on the market that have been crash tested for dogs uh, for, for safe travel. Um, so if you're interested in that, make sure that you do uh, purchase one of those types of harnesses. Otherwise, the other ones that you can buy um, are probably better than nothing, but we, that they're not being crash tested. And it is really important that you restrain your dog in the car, either by um, a piece of equipment or a crate or have them uh, behind a cargo barrier as well. One of the other things that I just really quickly wanted to mention was the use of muzzles. Um, and so there's lots of reasons why a dog might, might wear a muzzle. It's not just because they're a, an evil or aggressive dog. Uh, but if you see a dog wearing a muzzle, obviously please do give it as much space as possible. That's for their safety and for yours. Uh, and, but it does mean that that person is getting the dog out, which is really lovely. The dog is still um, being able to enjoy its walks and, uh, and, and is safe for everyone involved. But some of the other reasons why a dog might wear a muzzle is because they're on medication that require, that makes them starving and they just pick up anything that they can find on the floor and eat it, which is obviously very unsafe. Um, and so if for some reason you do need a muzzle for your dog, the muzzles that uh, we tend to recommend are what we call these basket muzzles here. And that means that your dog can open its mouth completely, it can pant and it can still drink. So in stressful situations or in, in hot weather, dogs need to be able to pant and drink. Um, and these basket muzzles enable dogs to do that. So if you're using a muzzle while your dog is exercising, um, or like got just going for a walk then uh, this is the muzzle that I would recommend. So I hope that provides you with some ideas on different types of equipment that you can use on your dogs. Uh, if you have any more questions you can um, find a trainer on the RSPCA force free trainers list and they will be able to um, give you some more tips and tricks for helping your dog enjoy your walks and um, reducing the pulling as well which can, can make walks a little bit less comfortable for us all. 
Thanks very much. Bye.